Today I'm going to show you how to get some still renders out of Unreal Engine 5. I have this scene here, and in this scene I'm going to try and make a thumbnail of this board game for one of my clients, my friends over at Stoneblade Entertainment, trying to make an image for their product launch. That being said, first thing you need is a camera. So you can go up to the hamburger lines and do create camera here and add a camera to your scene. I already have a couple cameras, so I'm going to go to my camera in the top left-hand corner of my viewport and select my cam thumbnail. This is the image that we're going to try and render. I also have two thumbnails, but we're just going to go with the one for now. The next thing that you need is a level sequence in your project. So in my content browser down here, I have the sequences folder and I have a thumbnail level sequence. If you don't know how to add a level sequence, you can right click in the empty space and go to cinematics and level sequence. Now I'm going to double click on this level sequence here and hit control shift S to save my project. From here, we have my cameras in my scene and in my level sequence. We can find them also in my outliner over here. Now, if you don't have a camera in your level sequence, you can just click and drag it into your level sequence, but I don't need to do that because I already have one here. Last thing we need is we need to go to the add button and make sure we add a camera cut track. This is going to tell the level sequencer what camera do we want to render from. So from here, we're going to go to the plus sign of the camera cut track and add a camera thumbnail. And then I want to render two images. So I'm going to go one frame forward. We're at frame zero right now. And one frame forward, I'm going to go to the plus sign and add this second image. So now at frame zero, we're going to render this shot. And at frame one, we're going to render this shot. Now it's not giving me the clear preview of what the camera looks like, so I'm just going to hit the little lock of viewport to camera cut just to leave that, and then I'm going to hit it again, and for some reason it's doing a weird funky thing. Come on, dude. There we go. It was giving me some weird errors, so I went up to my camera in the top left-hand viewport, and I cycled through my different viewport modes, the cinematic viewport, and then the motion design viewport here, and now I have the frame that I'm going to render. So sometimes Unreal will be a little weird with loading, but this is the frame that we're going to render. So... First things first, you need your level sequence, you need your camera cut track, and you only need to render a single frame. That being said, we're ready to render this shot. You can very well go up to the hamburger lines in the top left-hand corner of your viewport, and you can go to high resolution screenshot. When we select this, it'll be like, how big of a screenshot do we want? We also have some extra settings. I don't use this all that much, but you could set this to like two and then hit capture and it's going to take a screenshot of our viewport here. And we can see here that now we have an image of our viewport. We're still getting our icons in the center of our viewport. So we're going to go back to Unreal, hit G on the keyboard to hide all of our gizmos and extra light stuff inside my viewport and then hit capture again. And now we'll see in the lower right hand corner, we get a link to to the folder where it's gonna be and here's our screenshot and it looks fine awesome I could use this and post this on the internet but I'm gonna make this a little bit better and we're gonna use the movie render queue for that so we're gonna close all of this we're gonna close the high resolution screenshot let me show you the render settings that I would typically use for making a higher quality still render out of Unreal so we're gonna click on the movie render queue button which is this clapboard and we're gonna get this window from here, we're going to go to our settings, and I already have some settings loaded in, but let's just start fresh. To do that, let's just re-add our render, and we'll find our thumbnail. We can search for our thumbnail shot, and then under our settings, we have the default, which is a JPEG, with deferred rendering, which is going to be Lumen, and then our output, which is going to be where we want to save it, and the name of our image. First things first, I always delete the JPEG sequence and we're going to add a PNG sequence just because I like PNGs. And then we're going to go to our anti-aliasing. Now, I'm going to set my temporal count to 32. Typically, I would use like 16, sometimes 8. But for a still image, I'll just add a little extra just in case and we'll make it look nice and nice. From here, we're going to make sure we override anti-aliasing and set my anti-aliasing method to none. I'm going to set my engine warm-up count to 48 and render warm-up count to 48 and then render warm-up frames. I can also use my camera cut for warm-ups and from here, I can in my level sequencer down here, bring out my first camera cut 
to load up these frames here. Now it's not gonna render these frames, but it's gonna preload the image and like pre-light it and load any like vi visual effects and stuff in case we have that in our scene. This might be overkill sometimes, but I do it because it helps clean up any weird jaggedy issues I've found. So that being said, you can use your camera warm up or not, up to you. Now under our settings, we're gonna add console variables. And for our console variables, I will add two console variables. From here, I will type in r.screen percentage, and I will set this to 125. And the reason why we use a screen percentage is it's gonna scale up our image by 25% beyond the original amount. So 100 is one, it's basically the image. And then 25% more than that is gonna be just a little bit bigger. So I'll do 125%, you could do 200%, but again, the larger this number is, the harder it's gonna tax your computer. So be cautious about your GPU power. We'll add one more console variable and we'll type in r.depth of field quality. And we can see here as we mouse over our console variable in Unreal Engine 5.4, we get some previews of what the console variable does. So fun facts. I will set this and then the highest value is gonna be four and I'm good with those console variables. Now from here under our settings, we can add our game override and this is just a good thing I generally add to a lot of my renders because it'll brute force cinematic quality and what this means is that if we go to our settings and look at our scalability we can see here that my computer can handle the cinematic quality settings and try and use the highest quality settings for all of the assets in my scene but if you have a less powerful graphics card it might default to a lower option so the game overrides will basically say use the highest one possible that being said, game overrides in our project, and you can add a couple other things if you're doing more advanced things, such as object IDs and extra render passes and stuff. We can save this for another video. This will be enough from my high resolution still for now. So all that being said, we'll go to our output settings and I will set my output directory. I'll save this somewhere on my computer. I'll just put this into the renders folder where it belongs. And then I have my file name. So it's gonna name it the sequence. And if I go to move my render queue window, we can see the name of my sequence right here. Now that's perfectly fine. The frame number is gonna be one, zero and one. And then we have our output resolution. Now the reason why I'm doing an 8-bit PNG is because I know I'm gonna bring this into Photoshop or After Effects and compress it down into a JPEG for all of my final delivery to my client. But I use the 8-bit PNG in 3840 by 2160 just to get really high quality out of Unreal and do my final post-processing in Photoshop, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, whatever you want to use. That being said, set it to 3840 by 2160. And then from here, this is a good base for rendering high resolution stills in Unreal. So I will go to my save option and we can save this as a preset. We can call this my my thumbnail render cool we can save that and now we can find the my thumbnail render i should have a folder or somewhere my thumbnail render settings right here and i'm going to go ahead and move this into my cinematics folder move here and then from here what i'm going to do is right click on this and go to Actually, before we right click, we wanna hit Control Shift S and save it. So now it's gonna be saved onto our computer and then we can right click on it and go to Show and Explorer. Now, we can find the asset in here. Now, what I can do with this asset, if I wanted to save these render settings, I can save this somewhere else on my computer and then whenever I bring this into another project, I can take this U asset and put it into the content folder of my project and I can save that render setting. So just fun facts for saving render settings for future videos. So that being said, we did all of this. We can hit accept and we can go ahead and hit the render button. Now, because we are rendering more samples, we're adding more stuff to my scene, this will take longer because we're adding a lot more stuff to it. We can see here that it's during my warm-up, the warm-up frames that we made with our anti-aliasing, and once that's done, it will kick over off into the final render settings, which is going to be the 
So it's going to render 32 frames of anti-aliasing and temporal samples. And then once this is done, it'll move on to the second frame and render that, which you can see, right? Oh, it's doing a warm up for this camera cut as well. A few inches later. With the render done, we can go ahead and preview this image. And now we can see that we have a much cleaner image. And if we go back to Unreal and make a new high resolution screenshot, just to see the difference, let's go ahead and look at the one that we made earlier. We can see that we have some weird jaggedy grossness in that spot. Let's go ahead and dock this right there. And then let's go to the other render that we just made, which is gonna be right there and we can go ahead and preview hey look that looks a lot cleaner than this nonsense over here so that being said that is how i would do a still image render in unreal engine i hope you learned something if you did let me know in the comment section down below questions comments concerns whatever else comment section is down there for that as well and do you know what the final tip is as always it is going to be one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some goodbye my friends Bye, 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 bye.